how did you pick Chenin Blanc and Cabernet Franc as the two wines that you were going to specialize in? Uh, uh, very specific, um, uh, except that I really like the flavor profile of Chenin Blanc, is that there's a little bit more history behind it, is that uh, currently in South Africa we have over 50% of the world total plantings. Um, with one of the first varieties that was planted in, in su southern Africa. And, um, you know, we, we've been growing it for over 350 years, yet and nobody have stood up in the world and claimed Chenin Blanc like Argentina did with Malbec or what New Zealand did with Sauvignon Blanc um, or Chile did with Carmenere. So uh, um, there was something left that we had a lot of that we've been growing for a long time that we know was suited to our conditions and that we knew we could consistently produce at a very high quality level and that was Chenin Blanc. So Chenin Blanc, the motivation was that we could have gone out and set the benchmark of what Chenin Blanc should taste like in the world. Yes, we make fantastic Chardonnays, we make beautiful Sauvignon Blancs, but we we'll always be third or fourth in the queue because there's just so many people that have captured the market with uh, uh, that specific variety, um, yet we have the opportunity to say, yes, Chenin Blanc, this is what it tastes like, and we could set our own benchmark on what people's perception of Chenin Blanc uh, could be. And is there a lot of diversity in the different styles that people make Chenin Blanc with? Or? Uh, I, I think that that answer goes to Southern Africa. Uh, you, you know, diversity is just in our nature. If you look at our fauna and flora, uh, um, where we're situated with the warm Mozambique current uh, flowing up the west coast and the, and the warm Mozambique on the, on the east coast, uh, um, and just the amount of fauna and flora just on Table Mountain, uh, it's more than the whole of the United Kingdom. And, and in the Western Cape, there's more fauna and flora uh, uh, than in the whole of Europe. So South Africa has always been a, 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 a place of, of diversity, but not just from, from, from nature and soil types and fauna and flora, but also from people. Um, and I think that reflects in our wines and the styles that we make. We, we got such a diverse cultures and, and, and uh, all the people that came to the southern tip of Africa and how we melted and, and sort of uh, uh, intergrind with each other. Um, I think that, that diversity will always be part of what we have to offer to the rest of the world. What is, the, what is a greater upset? Rocky Balboa beating Apollo Creed or the Japanese beating the Springboks in the, in the rugby? No, I think definitely the Springbok losing to the Japanese. Uh, the next day I just ate the Springbok nigiri for breakfast, uh, 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 drank a lot of sake and then we have to move on, but it's very hard. Luckily we beat some work with, with uh, almost 40 points, uh, so the, 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 the next uh, day was not, the, or the next game was actually quite good. But um, on the other hand, uh, I think uh, for Japan is very good, and seeing that they're going to host the next World Cup, uh, it might just give him a good boost uh, in confidence. Um, so although it's really painful, but well done for Japan that they actually beat us. Fantastic. Thank you very yeah. much.